What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over a problem called Alpha Code, which is on Spage. Basically, you are given, uh, Alice is saying that uh, you're given this code, a simple code, and basically you're just translating, assigning A to, uh, to the word 1, to the number 1, B to the number 2, three, uh, C to the number 3, E to uh, D to the number 4, so on and so forth, until... A Z is the number 26. And then Bob is saying this is really stupid because if you're given the number, let's say 25114, and you are you translate it backwards, you could actually get many different letters, such as uh, bean, you could get bead, yad, yan, ykd, bekd, and so on and so forth. So now what they, they're asking you is that how many different encodings can you get if you're translating backwards from the number back to the letter? Okay, so that's that's basically the problem statement. How many different encodings if you're translating backwards from the number to the letter? So um, if you look at this number 25114, the reason why you could get many different translations is that if we look at here, 25114, whoops, uh, yeah, 25114. So if you look at this, you could actually, and we look at our translation encoding, A is one, B is two, and up Z is up to 26, right? Um, we, one, we could translate it, this uh, this encoding by each individual digit. So we could say like 2 is equal to B. So we would translate this to B. 5 is equal to E. So we translate this to E. 1 is A. So we translate this to A and this to A. And then 4 is D. So we translate this to D. So you could get B. But another way you could translate this is actually to take this number, 2, 5. And you actually could do it like this right each individual every two digits so if you do it this way you could actually realize that you have two five which is 25 and that's you could change change 25 into y so this would be y 11 could be changed into k so this would be k and then four could be changed into d which is the same thing but th this is not the only way you can interpret this as you can interpret this as two five one one four right you could interpret this as 14 two, five, and then a one. So then this would actually translate to Y, A, and then 14, which is N, Yen, right? So there, there's so many different ways you can in interpret this, these, this letter, uh, this number encoding and translating it into letters. So our job is just to figure out how many different encodings you could have, right? For like B, D, Y, N, D, Y, N. Okay. So yeah, that's basically the, the, basically the gist of the problem. Okay, so now I'm gonna explain how to do the solution. Okay guys, so what you realize in this problem is that, let's say I'm given a letter A, let's say I'm gonna given a letter A and then, yeah, if I'm given a letter A, I could just convert this letter A into its equivalent number form, right? But let's say I have B. So what, what, could, what happens now? How can I interpret this when I have A, B? If you have A, B, you can interpret this in two different ways, right? So the first two ways, the first way is to interpret as separate. So A and then a separate and then a B. This is just a delimitator showing a separate. And then you could translate this into like A, which is one, and then to B, two. And then this would be a translation, right? 12. Another thing you could do is that you could actually concatenate A, B as a concatenation. So a value that you actually added. So like A, B is actually equal to A times 10 plus B. Right, because if, if if each these each of these a and b are digits, right? We're saying them they both are digits, so you could actually represent this a times ten plus b. And given this state, given this state, um, if this state is between our corresponding encoding between one and twenty six, then we could actually add, uh, we could actually keep track of the count and include this as the different number of uh, numbers to include, right? So that's basically the gist of the problem. You need to have two states. Um, we're gonna use dynamic programming, two states. One is to interpret this as a regular individual numbers. The second state is to actually interpret that, interpret this when you multiply them together and add them. So yeah, that's the two different states. And then I'm going to explain like a scenario how you would do it. All right, guys, so this is the third time of me trying to explain this because I failed at explaining it so many times. So this is my third take. Anyway, so in order to try to f solve this problem, 
Remember, remember the two states that I talked about, about thinking of them separately and thinking of them together. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to keep a array called count. And this array is going to keep track for every ith position in our string of one, two, two, three. What we're, it's going to do is that it's going to, it's going to keep track the number of different, um, different ways you could uh, translate it for every ith position, right? So let's look at the first digit one. So the digit one, how many ways can you actually translate it? Well, um, if the digit is between one to nine, right, then that means we could have translated it back to its equivalent letter form, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You could translate that. If it's greater than nine, like JK, uh, well, first of all, that, that's not even possible because if it's greater than nine, yeah, it's not you can't have two digits for one digit, right? That's not possible. So it only could be one and nine. And uh, if it's these, then it, you could translate it at most once, right? Because whichever digit you have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you only could translate it to its corresponding letter. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So that, that count of the number of different ones you could have is only one. Okay. So now let's look at two. Okay. So now let's look at two. So um, at one, two, uh, the, remember the ith position is how many different digits at the ith position. So one, two, we're actually keeping track of one, two, like this, right? One, two, like this. And in one, two, like this, let's keep track of the two states that we talked about before. So the first state we talked about is that assuming that we're just translating them individually. So if we have one, two, like this, individual translations, right? So we're going to, if I change one, two, I'm going to translate it to its equivalent digit. We have one you can make it into a and then two can make it into B. So how many different, different, um, different, uh, letters can you actually have different combinations of it? Yeah. Well, compare this to the original of one of a just concatenating two onto it doesn't actually change any of its, the number of different ways you could have it. Right. Because if you look at this, um, this only could translate to AB if you think about it individually. So it, it, translating this to AB is only one. There's only one way of AB. There's only one uh, one translation. So that's still going to equal to one. And comparing that with A, that's the same thing as one, right? So it doesn't change if we're thinking about individually. If I concatenate another digit, the number of different translations doesn't change. So for this case, if we're just thinking about it individually. It's just going to equal to the same number of ways of the previous one. So what is the previous one? I minus one. So uh, normally when we're looping through all the digits, the count of the count of I is going to equal to I minus one count of I minus one. Okay. So that's what it means. So the count of the previous one is still going to be one. So it's going to equal to one. So now, now we can't just think about it individually concatenating it, right? We also have to think about it when it's together of one, two. So now it's 12, right? So now we're thinking about a 12. Well, can we actually translate this 12 into its corresponding letter? Yes, you can, right? So now let's think if, if we can translate it into it, uh, how many different ways can you do it? Well, you have to add by the number of different ways of concatenating it to its two letters before it. And what I mean by that is that the number of different ways of 12 is actually of having 12 is actually the same thing as the number of different ways of an empty string concatenated with 12, right? So the different ways of empty, the empty string is actually still going to be the same as one of count of one. So this is going to equal to one, right? So the number of different ways of 12 is it going to equal to the empty string number of different ways of empty string plus equal to 12 or whatever translation of 12 equals to, right? So our current number of different ways of 12 is actually one. We see here one. So we're actually going to add the different ways of empty string plus equal to one. So this is going to be one plus one. So this is going to be two. Okay. Now, um, now we're going to get to one, two, 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 and I'm actually going to clear most of these strings in order to Uh, in order to make it better because we don't need it anymore. Okay, so now we're at one, two, two, two. 
Uh, I think it was three but originally, yeah. So now we have count. It was one, two. So now we are thinking about one, two, two, two. So like I said before, if you're just gonna consider um, concatenating another digit, it's still gonna be the same as the previous digit, right? No matter how many digits you add, it's still gonna be, the original count is gonna be the same as before. So it's gonna be, how many different ways can you have of 12? It's gonna be the same thing as how many different ways of 12. So this is gonna be two, okay? So now let's think about this. Now we have to think about it, um, think about it, concatenating the rightmost digit, the previous digit with what your currently digit you have, right? Because we have to consider this case also. If I concatenate just the previous digit and my current digit, because that's, that's what you have to consider that also, right? So in this case, we have 22, uh, 22. and 22, you actually can look it up. So 22, you can look up it equals the V. So because of this, we're going to actually concatenate it with uh, how many different ways of one, of uh, one. So like we have one, two, 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 right? We're thinking about 22 and one. So we're going to actually add how many ways of 22 plus equal to the number of ways of one to get one, two, two, two. So number of ways of one is, is still is uh, one. Right, our count of one and the 22 is two so we're going to add these two up one plus two is going to get to three so this is going to give us three okay so now let's look at the fourth one so one plus two is going to give us three and yeah three so now let's look at the fourth way here one two two three um so how many different ways can you actually do this uh it's just going to be the same as the previous one because concatenating a new digit doesn't actually change anything originally, so it's still going to be three. But then now we have to think about having this case of two, three, and one, two. So when it's two, three, one, two, and then two, three, uh, yeah, two, three, does two, three work? So two, three does actually, you can actually look up two, three, so it's W. So then this is actually, we're going to add whatever, how many ways we could do at two, three, plus equal to the ones that we have of 12 here, of one, two, 12, and that's two. So we're going to actually add three plus two here in this case, so this is three and here, this one is two. So we're going to add them together. Three plus two is going to give us five. So we're going to change this to five. So five is actually the answer of how many different ways you could have of one, two, two, three. And that's basically the solution of how the solution works. All right, guys, now I'm going to explain the code and then I'll be on my way. So um, first we're going to read in our string n. Um, they, they said to keep reading it until n is zero. So what I did was I did a while loop. It's not equal to zero. And at the end of the condition, I'm going to read an n, our string. Okay, so here I create a length, uh, size of length so that I don't have to keep calling n dot size. So that's just the length of the string. So what I did here is I created a, an array called dp because we're using dynamic programming. That's basically our count array, but that's basically what I did here. So we have dp, the dynamic programming of it. So the first state, remember, if it's just one digit, we're going to have it equal to one because that's just one digit. Then I loop from one to the length of the string. I'm going to convert this string into its equivalent digit form. So uh, for each character, for each character, I'm going to convert it to its equivalent digit form. So if it's like one, two, three, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'm going to convert it, right? Um, if it's greater than zero, then I'm going to set the current, um, the number at the current position that I'm currently at is going to equal to the previous one, because that's how it normally works, right? That's how we explain. Okay. Now this is when the stuff gets more interesting. So remember, I have to check the value of each digit um, when it's separate and concatenated with the previous digit. So remember we had like one, two, two, three. I have to, if, I, if I'm at this last position, I have to check two, three to see if that works. So that is actually equal to the previous digit multiplied by 10 plus the current digit of three. So you have previous digit two times 10 is 20 plus three, which is 23. So that's why yeah, I had to do that here. Right, so this number is val is going to be uh, the previous digit converted, uh, the character converted to its number format, format, and then multiply by ten, and I'm going to add by the current digit converted to number format. Now here, I have to check if my current value is greater than or equal to ten and less than or equal to twenty six, because that's the that's the how many that's the way of two digits, right? For it's greater than or equal ten is this side, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z, right? Because that's checking if the two two digits concatenated together, you could actually look it up. So like 23, if you could look it up, stuff like that, 
yeah, if it's two digits, you can actually like, concatenate together to look it up. So if that's the case, then I'm going to add by the count of the previous digit, I minus two, okay? Um, if the current value is less than, if the current uh, value of I is less than two, then I'm just going to add by zero, right? Which is, that's just one, right? So this is because like if, if I'm, I don't, I don't want to get like out of bounds. I want to keep track of my count. So if it's like, if I'm at this position, right, of uh, zero, one, I would need to add it by uh, negative two. Uh, one minus two is negative one, right? The count of negative one. But uh, that, that gives out of, out of bounds. And we know that anything before this position is going to add by one, which is our count of one. So that's why we had to do that there. So, yeah, no matter what, if the pre the position is like less than two, then you're just going to add by one. Yeah, DP is zero is just one. So, yeah, in that case for that. Yeah, so that's basically the code. At the end, I'm going to print out the DP of the count array of last value at length minus one, which is the last value. And yeah, and then I read in my position of n. So yeah, that's basically how you do this problem. I hope you guys understand this problem. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.